What's up? It's Josh Hewitt, Top Form Fitness. Once again, time to do it with Hewitt. And today I wanted to make a video on something I've, uh, I've addressed before and that is minimalist training. I just got out of a couple of years of competing in physique competitions and I made it to provincials, qualified for nationals, and I'm taking a little break from that. A lot of uh, high volume of training and uh, a lot of attention to uh, isolation work and I'm feeling like it's time to get back to basics. I want to cut back on the uh, overall volume of training and just uh, focus on the fundamentals again. I, I got a lot of other priorities and projects that I have on my plate now. so. Uh, I'm not going to be spending as much time training, but I still want to get the most bang for my buck. I really found that I was able to increase my intensity of training with these minimalist workouts because I only had three exercises to focus on. I could really go all out. The workouts were short uh, and I could, uh, my recovery was very good. I still made a lot of progress, strength gains. Uh, I actually did gain some muscle. Aesthetically, you know, you're not addressing the isolation movements as much, so medial delts and arms maybe lag a little bit, but overall strength went up, uh, muscularity went up, intensity was increased, my recovery was better, had more time between workouts. So basically how I put together the minimalist workouts was to take one big lower body exercise like a squat, deadlift, split squat, a lunge variation, then an upper body pull variation like uh, pull down, chin up, row, and a, uh, an upper body push movement, either some sort of chest press or overhead press variation. And I'd perform that as a strength circuit you know, three to five times through, take it to fatigue on that last round, boom, done. So today I'm gonna to, uh, go through uh, another variation of a minimalist workout that I'm working on. And what I wanna do is set up a minimalist workout of the week. I'm gonna try and post one of these every week to give you guys an example of uh, what I'm doing over the next several weeks to keep my training intensity up with a minimal investment of time in the gym. Because I know a lot of people, the biggest excuse is that they don't have time to work out. That's what I'm gonna go through, but before we get into it, I wanna take you on a little tour of my gym. You gotta check it out. It's a sweet setup. Got my rack here, I'm setting up for some safety squats today. Uh, just recently hooked up a heavy bag to, uh, to the rack. Don't have a stand down here. Pulley system, a bunch of bars. Just got my log press bar down here as well now. And parallettes, battle rope, dip bars, glute hand machine, another hex bar, T-bar row. Uh, I got a couple of adjustable benches, adjustable dumbbells, the Chuck Norris uh, Total Gym, infrared sauna, oh yeah, and my cardio arena right here, which is just a spin bike, bunch of dumbbells, hundreds of pounds of weight plates. All right, let's train. First of all, I recommend starting every workout with a quick dynamic warm up. I'll post a link to the warm up on the screen here as well as down in the description section below. You can check that out. This will not only help prevent injuries, but will help prepare your body for the workout. Now, moving on to the warm up set. So, I'm doing one warm up set for each of the main exercises. First one is a safety squat, moving on to one arm dumbbell row and finishing with an incline chest press, dumbbell chest press. So I choose a weight that's about 50 to 60% of my working weights and I'm performing higher repetitions, 12 to 15 rep range. Trying to get a good pump, but not taking to complete fatigue. My rep speed will be a little bit quicker on the warm up sets than it is on the working sets, but I'm still maintaining smooth control and full range of motion. When I get to the working weight, with a little bit heavier load, I'll be paying a little more attention to the eccentric, controlling the negative, not letting gravity do all the work. Finishing up here with the incline dumbbell chest press, getting in a solid warm up set, and then moving on to the working sets and starting back at the safety squats. Work on keeping pretty continuous tension throughout every repetition. Minimal time resting at the top, controlling the negative or the descent. Getting close to parallel to the floor. I do base my range of motion on how much continuous tension I can feel in the muscles and comfort in the joints. Working in the 6 to 12 repetition range with the lower body movements, I try to keep the rep range a little higher, so it will typically be 10 to 12 reps. 
And then I move on to the upper body pole movement, one arm dumbbell rows. Again, with the heavier load, I pay a little more attention to controlling the negative, really squeezing at the top of every repetition, taking it pretty close to fatigue within the 6 to 12 rep range. Once I can perform all sets at the higher end of the rep range, I do increase the weight for the next workout. Obviously performing the same number of reps for the opposite arm. And typically I'll start with my weaker side, so I'm not favoring my, my dominant side, my stronger side. This gives the weaker side a chance to catch up by training it first while it's fresh and matching the reps with the strong side. After the one-arm dumbbell row, I move on to the incline dumbbell chest press. Again, working within a full range of motion, controlling the negative, pausing at the bottom, trying not to bounce or swing the weight, keeping continuous tension on the target muscle group, exhaling on exertion. After this, I would perform another two to three rounds of the strength circuit with the working weights here. And then the last set, at the last round, I would take it to complete exhaustion. And after reaching failure on the last set of each exercise on that last circuit, I would reduce the weight immediately to about 50 or 60% of the working weight, about the same weight as I used for the warm up. And again, perform as many repetitions as possible. For this drop set, I would again try to take it to complete fatigue, complete failure with a little bit higher rep tempo, even a little quicker than I did with the warm up set. Still using control. Maintaining good continuous tension with the higher repetition range, going for that sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, that metabolic distress, and trying to create some deeper inroads into fatigue. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the section below and I'll make sure I get back to you. I'll be making a point of posting a new minimalist workout of the week every week. Make sure you subscribe for more. And until next time, stay strong.